Hi. <laughs> I'm I'm on stream, right? Yeah. Cool. Neat. Okay, yeah. I was waiting for the thing to count down so that like I could actually see it. You put my name wrong. It's a K, it's not an H. <laughs> <laughs> it's already going great. Awesome. All right. Three, two, one, go. Thank you. Thank you. I will need it. All right. So, how's it going, everybody? I'm Skazi. I'm doing some Luigi's Mansion No Out of Bounds. Uh, this category is basically not quite glitchless, but it's sort of the same idea. Um, in this game, there's a glitch that lets you skip straight after the first boss. You can go straight to the final boss. So this category doesn't allow that skip. Um, I'm going to be going through the game basically the same way you would in a casual like playthrough of the game, just doing it fast. Um, there's a lot of, like, tech that you can do to, to, like, speed up stuff like sucking up the ghosts. So you'll see right here, um, when I suck up these guys, like, I try and do weird movement after they hit 0 HP. And what I'm trying to do is speed up the animation so that they go into the vacuum quicker. And you get a range of different speeds of that. There's two different animations, either a wave or a twirl. And if you get a twirl animation, it's actually faster than a wave animation. So I'm trying to get Luigi to stand up straight by moving towards the ghost right as they hit 0 HP. Um, it, it varies in speed on top of that though, so like a fast wave is about the same speed as a slow twirl. So you want to get fast twirls, obviously. But, um, there's like a lot of optimization to be done, so even just the first area of the game, nobody has ever gotten even close to optimal. Like, you can't uh, you can't play this anywhere near task level RTA. It's just way too difficult to optimally suck up ghosts. So right here, I don't actually do a double on purpose. Um, because the ghost in the wardrobe isn't on the cycles of the room, whereas the one in the center is. So I don't want to take the time to set up a double and wait longer after I catch both ghosts. So it looks counterintuitive, but it is faster not to get a double there. Strats like that are the stuff that I really like about this game. I like the, the little details that really make it uh, interesting and fun. So whenever you... Uh, Whenever you get an item like that key that spawns, there's like four seconds before you can actually move it with the vacuum. So you have to just sit there and wait and you can time like when you start backing up. That's why I stood there for a while. Um, you'll see that come back a few times later too. So any item that like lands on the ground, you can just walk into. But if it spawns like on a shelf or something, you have to like time when you start moving. And, and it's really weird how the... Uh, how the vacuum mechanics work. You want to have the item like as as high above you as possible to move it so that it uh, moves at like the same speed that you do. If the item is like far away from Luigi, then it's just going to fall straight down and and his vacuum isn't going to be able to like actually pull it towards him as quickly. And when you're sucking up these ghosts, basically what you do is you hold the opposite direction for about 10 HP, and then you need to let go of the control stick and hold it again. And you just keep doing that, uh, that, like, motion, um, because if you hold for longer than 10 HP, your vacuum slows down, so you have to just, like, quickly reset it. So sucking up ghosts is actually pretty difficult to optimize as well. So right here we have the first boss after Area 1. His name is Chauncey and he has a really long cutscene here. 
Um, so this boss is like, basically just, uh, you do two cycles on him, because you can't one cycle him. You can get his HP down to like two or something in one cycle, but then uh, he will break off after a certain amount of time anyway, so you can't get him in one cycle. Um, basically, when you do 35 HP uh, to Chauncey in one cycle, you'll see his animation actually changes. He starts fighting against you, and it starts a timer that isn't long enough to one cycle him. So I'm just going to drop him uh, above 50 HP, because if he's below 50, he'll do a longer attack in the second cycle. So I do this weird setup so that I can catch this ball. Then I just take off a little bit of his HP. Basically, uh, these balls are, are coming towards you in a very specific pattern. And you want to just catch them out of the air. Uh, if you, if you like, get the balls to touch you, then you take damage on them. So what I'm going to do right here, um, for the second cycle, you have to get hit by this rocking horse. And then you knock here to preserve your invincibility. And then you can catch this ball, which would normally just do damage to you. So that's area one finished. Um, after each area, you get this cutscene where it shows just like all the portrait ghosts that you got going, uh, going and turning into actual portraits. So it's just like a nice little break after each area. This game does have like a fair amount of cutscenes, but they're all pretty short. It's not actually too heavy on, uh, on like cutscenes. It's just there, there are quite a few of them, I guess. Yeah, heading into Area 2, um, things are going to start getting a little bit more complicated. Some of the strats are going to be more difficult. Uh, the first thing that we do in Area 2 is boot release, so that's where the game starts to get a bit more interesting. Instead of just dealing with normal ghosts, we also have to deal with boos. Which I think really makes up like the, uh, the most interesting part of this run, is, is finding and catching the boos quickly. So the boos hide in a random spot in each room. Um, there's certain objects that they can hide in, but uh, it, it's always going to be random which one they're in. So it becomes interesting, like, you know, more so than just getting good RNG, what you need to do is manage your bad RNG. So like, you know, if you get RNG that's like far away from where you are, you need to read it quickly. Nice fucking movement. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll show you some of that as we get to it. Just gonna set up a double on these guys real quick. Look, Mill, how about you get world record if it's so easy? Do you want to fight me? Honestly, this guy, so unprofessional. I'll have you know that I have world record in the most important category, which is Bogmire King. <laughs> Alright, so this is one of my favorite rooms in the entire game. Doing these Shy Guy doubles is really hard. It's super fun to try and optimize this. So those were like, okay. Uh, definitely not, like, super optimal, but those were okay. But yeah, this room is really fun to try and optimize. I probably spent the most time practicing this room of, like, anything in the game. So this is early release. Um, that saves 10 seconds. Half of the time, these guys will take 10 more seconds to show their heart. There's nothing you can do about it, but I did get early release there. So that's pretty cool. Oh, by the way, when I'm pulling out the camera and facing away from ghosts like that, what I'm doing is uh, a strat that I found because I'm kind of kind of a badass like that. 
Um, it's called a Skazi Scare Skip. Basically, when ghosts spawn next to Luigi, you see this animation where he jumps up like that? You can't control him during that, but if you pull out the camera and you face away, then, uh, then you don't get scared, so you can control him a second sooner. So I just do that on some of the ghosts where it makes it easier to face them, like, as soon as they spawn. So this is Boo release. Um, fun fact, the Boos are hiding here, they're, they're not trapped. It's like one of the most common misconceptions. Um, people think that, that the Boos are trapped down there and then they ask how they actually caught Mario if they're trapped. They're hiding. Yeah, then you get a call from Egad and he uh, basically tells you that you're an idiot for not sucking up the booze while they were all right there. <laughs> yeah, now we now we get to catch booze, which is, like I said, I think it makes the game a lot more interesting. It's one of the things that really uh, you have to learn to get good at. It takes a lot of understanding to be good at finding the booze. So in this first room, you really want to get a text skip because you have a really long text um, on the first boo to explain like how boos work. So you can suck up this sheet after you catch the boo but before the text shows up and it will skip the text. So I could just do it like that. So that saves a lot of time. Uh, the boo can hide in that table and then you won't be able to get the text skip because you have to pull off the sheet to get the boo. So that's bad RNG that you can get. This is actually pretty damn good RNG, though. <laughs> but yeah, you, you go through and you have to catch five boos before you can progress. So that's why I went back and I got those ones immediately. Um, then I'm gonna get two from here, and then you can go into the washroom and grab the key for the mirror room. So you have to get 40 boos before you can get to King Boo. Um, so as you're going through the run, you have to collect most of the boos that you encounter. But you don't get all of them, you do skip 10 boos in the game. So, uh, I'm going through and I'm like reading the radar to know which objects the boos can be in. Each room has a boo and a trap in it. So, um, there's a couple of things that you can learn, like, just as you're reading the radar. You can figure out which objects have the boo or the trap in it. And, um, if you, if you hear like a, a cackle of the boo, it means that he switched. So if the boo switches and an object that you knew had something in it before still has an object in it, it's, it has to be the trap, it can't be the boo. And if the switch happens and something that didn't have an object in it suddenly does, then that means it is the boo, guaranteed. Because the traps don't switch, but the boos do. So that's something that you can learn to, uh, to pick up on. And that will save you a lot of time if you apply that knowledge quickly. So right here, you can you can see the reflections of these ghosts in the mirror. They're they're invisible in the room though. So I'm gonna set up a double here. Just get grabbed and shake him off. So when I shake off these guys, I just spin the C stick instead of touching the control stick so that Luigi doesn't turn. So they go just directly behind me like that. So I spawn this boo. I'm gonna do a weird thing here where I grab the fire medallion as I'm getting the boo and then I'm gonna save and quit with it. So I don't need to do the puzzle in this room to get out. I don't need to get the fire medallion text and the butler is gonna have a consistent cycle. 
So the butler walks like left and right in the hallway. Um, and it used to be that like when you went to him, it was basically just random where in the hallway he was. So you could lose time if he was really far left. But by doing that, then he's always going to be in the same place as long as my movement is good. Oh my god, he featured the wrong channel too? Disgusting. This marathon is unprofessional. <laughs> I want a refund, dude. I hate this marathon. I quit. Alright, so here I'm gonna get the hat out, but I'm not gonna collect it. Because what I want to do is pick up the hat as the chest is spawning. So that I can skip the animation of it. So it's, it's pretty precise. I should, uh... If I play well, I should get it, though. It's not too crazy. Yeah, just like that. So I walk into it after the chest starts spawning. Um, you have to have the momentum going into it. Because you don't have control of Luigi. He has to, like, finish taking a step and pick up the hat. So that just saves you a little bit of time. I open that uh, mouse hole so that when I catch the boo, I can go into it and skip the text. That's a Japanese-only trick. Um, those text skips don't work on any other version. Where the hell is this guy? <laughs> I didn't hear that switch. Yeah, there you go. And I'm gonna do the same going back. So in this room you have a bunch of these guys hiding in chests. They have ice, like, over their heart. So you have to burn them before you can do damage. So you can do that cool setup where you get, like, the quad. Saves a good few seconds. Oh jeez. <laughs> that was nearly bad. This thing is like the hardest fucking object in the game to actually activate. <laughs> really dumb. You have to have your vacuum at a really specific angle. That's not gonna work. Yeah. That tech skip is really precise as well. I didn't back up fast enough to get it. But that's okay, it only saves a few seconds. So when I'm going from a lit room into a dark room, like that, um, you'll see me like spamming my element. That's because you can do what's called a flashlight skip, where you, you spray a little bit of element, either fire, water, or ice, and it cancels the animation of you pulling out your flashlight, so you get movement half a second f faster. Um, you can do a similar thing as well in a lit room if you're trying to pull out your vacuum. That also takes half a second, so you can shoot a, uh, a little bit of your element and then pull out your vacuum instantly. And we call that a vacuum cancel. So those little things, you know, like, over the course of the run, they add up quite a lot. And they're not, like, super precise, but, uh, you know, just, just getting into the habit of doing stuff like that really helps. Alright. So this boo is somewhere on the left side of the room. It's not, uh... It's not the best RNG, you do want to see him on the right side there, but it's not a huge deal. Yeah, that, that was fine. Decent find, too. That's one of the harder reads in the game. Figuring out from the radar which object he's in when it's one of those center objects. But yeah, now we're gonna head to the kitchen and get the water element. Um. Right, right about now, like, the, uh, the game starts to, to sort of stop holding your hand, I guess. With Area 3, the game really doesn't hold your hand anymore. 
like up to this point it's still like a little bit of a of a like tutorial type thing like it's still teaching you mechanics and stuff but yeah it's sort of at this point you uh you really just have to figure shit out on your own okay so that switch didn't really matter he switched from uh from the cabinet into the fridge there. It was just switching one spot over. So on this dog, um, I'm gonna avoid getting hit twice in a row. And then I'm gonna get hit intentionally to cancel the third attack as soon as possible. Because after three attacks, the, uh, the Mr. Bones guy spawns. So you wanna just shake him off after the third attack. And I put him like right there specifically so that his heart shows immediately after I get Mr. Bones. Important detail. Very important. Don't forget it. That guy's name is Mr. Bones. Have some respect. These are just normal skeletons though. They're unnamed. But that's Mr. Bones. And you will show him respect. You will use his name. Alright, so now we have Bogmire. This guy's like my favorite. Um, he's the Area 2 boss. Uh, when you're first starting to learn the game, he's pretty difficult to one cycle. But it gets to a point where, you know, it, top runners one cycle him pretty much every time. You have to really mess up to not get it. But definitely, like, the barrier of entry on it is pretty high. So he, he like drags you really strongly, um, like one of the stronger ghosts in the game as far as like dragging you. So he breaks off pretty easily, but uh, if you just track him well then it's not too bad. I'm not tracking him well, but yeah there you go. Still a one cycle, just a very slow one cycle. But yeah, that's area two done. Heading into area three now. So we have another one of these uh, ghost portrait uh, cutscenes. So area three is like, you know, like I said, it, it starts to get a bit tougher for sure. Um, I would say that it's probably the the part where RNG matters the most because especially on the Clairvoya split like there's a lot of boos that you're getting in a row and also the boos start having random texts uh, the first 15 boos that you get always have the same texts but then the the other ones don't have the same texts every time so you're getting 40 boos in this run, um, 15 of them have uh, the same text every time, 15 of them uh, come from Bulosis. So you get a text skip on one of the random texts, so you, you have 9 random texts, and each one can you lose you probably like 5 seconds or so, uh, depending on what RNG you get. So it's, it does add up, for sure. Um, and just in general, like, you know, there's, there's also, like, a lot of uh, RNG involving, like, where, um, where the twins hide, where booze hide, that sort of stuff. Overall, it's, it's definitely a lot of execution, though. It's not all RNG, like, this game is, is easy to write off as being all RNG because for for like a from a an objective standpoint if if you don't understand the mechanics of the game it does just seem like all the time loss is is to where booze are hiding but you can find them so quickly if you just read the radar well So I'm going to stand like right here and pick up this key just like with the side of Luigi's hitbox. You could save a little bit of time there. 
Because normally he, he won't stand on top of that stone unless you're in pretty precise positioning. So that's just a nice little time save. Um, this segment is a lot of fun, like, little details, you know, getting all these flashlight skips and, uh, and optimizing movement. It's a pretty basic segment, though. There's not a lot going on for the ice segment. That was bad. <laughs> I walked past that key a little bit by accident. But yeah, right here I'm gonna shoot water through the roof. And that will hit a door up here that was on fire. These, uh, these fire doors take, like, forever to actually go out. After you spray water on them, it's like... I don't know exactly how long, probably like four seconds or something that you can't go through the door after you water it. So you notice that I did that in the kitchen as well. You just want to put out the door and then do something else for a while. But yeah, luckily that water actually clips through the, uh, the roof just a little bit so you can hit the door from under it. So now we have the ice medallion. This boot always switches so you can get a read on it. Um, so, like, I knew for sure that he was going to be in there. It's nice when that happens. But yeah, you can get a read on it before you do anything in the room, which is nice. So now we're going to head over and do Petunia. Um, so with the ice, it's actually the only element that affects booze. When you spray a boo with ice, it will actually freeze in place. But you know, I'm I'm doing boo strat, which is an exploit to uh, to keep the boos in place. So it just has a weird effect where the, where the boo makes a ridiculous sound and sort of flails around, <laughs> but it doesn't change the boo strat much at all. It just looks and sounds really weird. Because basically, uh, you didn't. When you start doing damage to the boo after freezing it, it unfreezes. So you're just constantly freezing and unfreezing it with the boo strat. I guess I didn't properly explain boo strat. I should do that. It's a little bit late, but whatever. I'm competent, I promise. Um, <laughs> so with boo strat, what I'm doing is I'm holding down the L and R buttons. And uh, what that does is it just keeps your vacuum out as normal if you're just holding R. But it also has the added benefit of when you let go of R, it switches to spraying, like this. So you can let go of R and then press it again to basically start sucking up the boo again immediately. You skip that half a second of pulling out the vacuum. And the boos are made so that when you start sucking them up, they make a cackling sound. And uh, after each cackle, they'll stay still for about 10 HP. So you can just keep causing them to cackle over and over again. But they only have 15 cackles, so you need to make sure that you are only getting one cackle in between each pump, and that, um... And that, you know, you just utilize every pump fully. I missed that double, that sucks. <laughs> That's a pretty big time loss, but whatever. Just back it up real quick. Yeah, once you start getting into, like, the area of four boos especially, getting them in one cycle is actually pretty hard sometimes. Uh, <laughs> that was a little bit of a weird read there, but I found him pretty quick, I guess. It's pretty uncommon for the boo in this room to be in either of the bottom candles. Usually he's somewhere at the top of the room. It's really common for him to be in one of the two cabinets. That's why I checked those first. So with Boo RNG, um, there's there's objects that Boos are more likely to be in. They do favor certain objects, but they're not always like in certain objects or anything. There's never like a guarantee that a Boo's gonna hide in a certain spot, and there's no way to manipulate the RNG that we know of. We actually have very loose understanding in general of how the RNG in this game works. Um, there's a task of this game, and when Malia was making the task, <laughs> I 
I swear to God, the words that he said to me about his understanding of how the Boo RNG works was, I think it has something to do with the pearls. That was his entire <laughs> explanation of how RNG worked. He said he, he thinks it has something to do with how many pearls you have. Nothing more than that. He had no idea. But, um, th yeah. That was really eye-opening for me. <laughs> Basically, like, we know that which object Abu hides in is decided when you're two rooms away. Rather, when you when you enter the adjacent room, I guess, is the better way of putting that. Um, but we don't know what exactly causes it to decide certain spots. So Malio just did it by, uh, by trial and error, pretty much. So this room is pretty fun too. I like these rooms where you have to do uh, manipulation with the grabber ghosts to line up multiples. It's always fun for me. So like right here you get a double like that. And then you get a triple in the next wave. Alright, so that was a good example of, like, some multitasking there, you know? Reading the radar while I was opening the chest and, and then grabbing the glove while this boo was spawning. That's the sort of stuff that really, uh, like, sets apart great players from good ones, is, is multitasking in every situation, you know? And just in general, having, like, clean, uh... Clean execution is really hard to do in this game. Alright, so that's actually my favorite RNG in this room. It's not optimal, but I like being able to grab that fire refill. Because that way I have, uh... I have less to worry about with getting all the, the flashlight skips and vacuum cancels in this hallway. You don't normally refill on element until the ice before safari room. So you go through this entire hallway, you do clairvoyant, and then you get ice. So the twins hide in random boxes in this room. You can check which one they're in just by either vacuuming or spraying element on the boxes. The ones that shake have the twins in them. So I got the worst RNG right there, but uh, it, it doesn't waste a whole lot of time. just sucking up some of those pearls so that they're not in the way while I'm getting this boo. Because when you have stuff like that that you auto-lock onto, because your vacuum will uh, favor pearls over a boo. Fuck me. <laughs> but yeah, when you have stuff like that that you auto-lock onto, it can be kind of bad. You need to be very careful of stuff like that. But yeah, that was unfortunate. Um... Your vacuum stops auto-locking on booze at 0 HP, but you don't just, uh... You don't just suck them up, you know? Because while you're doing damage to the boo, it actually works very differently from just sucking them up normally. Because your vacuum will, will sort of aim for you just a little bit. If you're aiming the general direction of the boo, your vacuum will, like, correct it so that you're aiming at it. But at 0 HP, that aim stops helping you. <laughs> so you need to make sure that you're actually aiming at it so that it doesn't just do what happened there, where it just leaves your vacuum. So here I'm gonna get a text skip. 
on that sheet. This room is really laggy, so it's nice that that text skip exists, because if you get a slow text there, it actually, like, it really, really lags. And you lose probably, like, seven seconds if you get the slowest text. So this is the funnest part of the game. I think everyone's gonna really like this part. Um, it's really interesting to watch, it's really fun to do. I would say just all around the best part of the game right here. Um, this is the part where you press A and then you press B, and then you repeat that for over a minute. So yeah. I'm sure that everyone really enjoys this. This is my favorite part. This is actually why I run Luigi's Mansion, honestly. So, uh, what we're doing here is we're depositing all of the Mario items that I collected. The hat, the note, uh, the star, the shoe, and the glove. And she's basically using them to, to give you a, a fortune. And it's basically just a way of, of forwarding the plot. She's just a, like, exposition machine, pretty much. But then at the end of it, um, she a she's actually the only ghost that wants to turn into a portrait. She asks you to suck her up so that she can become a portrait because she, she finds it peaceful, as she puts it. So yeah, the controls for her are inverted. Instead of holding away from her for 10 frames and then neutral for one, you hold uh, just any direction for 10 frames and then towards her for one. Whoa. That was nearly bad. All right, well, that worked out fine. <laughs> so now we're going to head up and do uh, the safari run. And then after that, we have the Area 3 boss, Bulossus. So Bulossus is, is awful, casually. Honestly, just the worst boss. Um, I'm sure that a lot of people here who've played this game before can agree that Bulossus is just terrible. But in the speedrun, he's very trivial. It's actually pretty cool how... Uh, how Bulossus works in the speedrun. I think it's very, very interesting, and um, I can't really go through exactly what's happening in the fight, because I've done it before on stream. I can just talk about Bulossus for like 20 minutes straight, explaining how stuff works. I, I would bore you to death trying to get uh, any sort of high level understanding across. But I'll, I'll show you like the basics of it while it happens. Oh my god, I got two poison mushrooms in this room. <laughs> Fuck. If I get a double here, then that doesn't lose much of any time. Okay, yeah, whatever. That was a little bit of time loss, nothing major. Oh, I'm just flashing my... Nice meme. I'm just flashing my flashlight for fun. It doesn't do anything. It's just like a habit that pretty much most Luigi's Mansion runners have. Like, it keeps your mashing warmed up, I guess. Mashing is actually a big part of this game. I don't need this ice, so I just fuck around with it sometimes. Your ice empties during this fight anyway. But yeah, Bulossus is an interesting fight. So it starts off as one big boo, and then you have to pop him on the unicorn statue, and he spreads into 15 small boos. And then you need to freeze them and suck them up. Uh, there's three different phases of AI that the small boos will have. Um, they start off sort of, they try to get near you, and then they just stop. They move really slowly, they just try and, like, sort of stand near you, they don't do anything. Then the second phase, they, uh, they run away from you, and they're really fast. And then the third phase, they're even faster, and they try to attack you. 
Um, so you really, really, really desperately want to avoid the second phase because it's awful. But you can almost always, with good execution, just freeze almost all of them right there and then get a one cycle. Like that. So yeah, like I said, pretty trivial if you do it well. Yeah, basically all you're doing there is you're trying to group them up because they, they path fine towards you a little bit. So you can just group them up and then shoot an ice ball right down the middle. Yeah, there's there's a lot more to that than meets the eye. Like I said, I could I could talk about that fight for like 20 minutes straight. There's a lot of little detail and, and interesting uh, quirks to it. Yeah, that's Area 3 done. Um, heading into Area 4, definitely the hardest part of the game, execution-wise. Um, there's like a big ramp up in difficulty from Area 3 to Area 4. You're gonna see much higher health boos that are faster. You're gonna see uh, more difficult ghost patterns in the rooms. Some interesting portrait ghosts. Yeah, there's also just a lot of walking around in Area 4 too, though. <laughs> so the first thing we do is we just head all the way up to where we just were in the, uh, in the attic. Oh, did I not switch to sidestep? Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Noted. I think I paused to do it, but I didn't actually get the input off. That's fine. You want to be in sidestep because we're heading to blackout. And, um... During the blackout, like, every room in the mansion becomes dark again. And there's ghosts, like, everywhere. But you can cheese it just by being in sidestep. Because you just hug the walls and, and you face the center of the room and none of the ghosts can spawn. So you basically can completely trivialize the entire concept of blackout. Casually blackout is really hard though. Yeah, as you can see, it's it's just completely trivial if you do this. None of the ghosts can spawn. So we're gonna head straight to Grimly and suck him up and then cancel the blackout. The hint that you get as to where Grimly is is like one of the worst things in this game. It's actually just awful. <laughs> it's one of the things that I really just don't like about this game. There's not many things, but the hint that they give you is that he he's only in the darkest places and he likes mirrors. As you can see, he is standing next to a mirror. But that, that hint makes you think, oh, mirror room. You know, the one named after the giant mirror? <laughs> but that's not where he is. Your next thought would be um, the, the billiards room, which has the second biggest mirror. But he's not there either, he's just in this room, wardrobe room, which the hint doesn't even begin to actually describe. <laughs> I don't know why they did it that way. But the, the story behind Grimly is at least interesting. Um, the reason why he likes mirrors is because he's, uh, he's a war veteran. Um, so he has PTSD, he wants to be able to see behind him. And when when he shows his heart you can notice that what he does is he has a heart attack um he, he like clutches his chest and he reaches out with his other hand it's like very visual you can you can just like immediately know that he's having a heart attack which i find really cool um there's a lot of like 
with the backstories of the ghosts, they can't, since it's an E-rated game, they can't say a lot of, like, really dark stuff, but they really imply a lot of it. There's some really fucked up things in this game. There's a heavy implication that, um, that Lydia cheats on Neville, and that, uh, Chauncey isn't Neville's son, it's Biff's. That was a really bad job, getting this boo, but whatever. I was more scared of just the poison mushroom. I was trying to avoid that. All right, so now we're gonna head up to the attic. Um, we got the toy soldiers coming up. They're really fun. Um, and then a couple more rooms. Oh, nice movement, dude. <laughs> I was trying to mash A to go through the door, and I knocked on that. That was my bad. <laughs> yeah, we're we're sort of nearing um, like some of the final things. A lot of the rooms are, are like kind of spread out towards the end, though. You know, you have to go back up to the attic quite a few times. So that, like I said, there's a lot of walking around in Area Four, but in between it, there's a lot of really fun rooms. So it's like kind of forgivable. You can burn those fake doors. It's kind of fun to do sometimes. So for the toy soldiers, I like to go for a double. Um, a lot of runners just do singles on them because it is really hard to get the double. Like, I'll fail it fairly often, um, but I think it's worth going for. But yeah, these guys are, are pretty hard to suck up, so getting two of them at once is pretty risky. You absolutely, in an RTA setting, you cannot go for the triple. It would take way too long to set up. You would definitely not get the suck up, and it wouldn't even save that much time. That was a bad setup, jeez. So I didn't properly go for the double there. I, I messed up the setup pretty badly. But that was still, like, faster than singles, I think. Just a little bit. So here I'm just gonna burn all the Shy Guys. Um, you can, you can like, burn all of them once and then suck them up instead. But I, I find it a lot more consistent to just burn all of them, and it's not really slower. There's some, like, debate in the community as to which is, like, a better strat. But I, I definitely think that burning them is, is better. It's a little bit less swag is the thing. <laughs> but it's a lot more consistent, and it, it's probably about the same speed. It might actually be faster. All right, so now we're gonna do the armory room. Armory is uh, is pretty fun. It's it's very interesting. Um, you have to get uh, a bunch of ghosts, and like you you knock on armor statues to get the ghosts out. So you can do like interesting movement between uh, between the statues to get these ghosts. There's a lot of different strats you can do in this room. You'll see, like, very different things from certain runners. So, like, what I'm doing here is is a lot faster than what you'll see in, like, World Record, for example. That triple is really hard. I, I like when I get it that clean. That was really good. Okay, that is the boo. So what you can do here, this boo is really aggressive, so you can 100% consistent get him to swoop here. And then just get out of his way like that. Mm, that was my bad. That's really, really big mistake. I wasn't sure if I had another cackle, so I tried to play it safe, but I was too far away from him. 
that was unfortunate. Whatever, though. So, we're gonna save warp from here. It's just a faster way to, uh, to get back to the lobby. So next we have Pipe Room, which we're actually not even going to complete. Um, you have to get the key out of Pipe Room, but the key is there whether you light the room up or not. So it's actually faster to uh, to just leave Pipe Room dark and, and walk through it. This is a strat that came around like quite a while after I started running this game. Nobody even really considered the concept. Like we knew that the chest was there. But, like, nobody really made the connection, like, oh, it would be faster to just skip the boo in this room and do that. It's one of those, like, oh, how did nobody find this for so long type things. Like, it should be really obvious. I don't know how none of us thought of it for so long. It's really funny, honestly. Yeah, that was a really good dark pipe. Alright, now we got Weston. Um, this is my favorite of the portrait ghosts. I like him a lot. He's just sitting here frozen in a block of ice. He gets mad at you when you light the campfires because he says it's too hot. And uh, he starts attacking you. You can't really see it um, when you're just looking at him like frozen there. Because it's really, really bright. But he has like this really goofy grin on his face. I, I love the way that his uh, his character is drawn. Just this big goofy grin on his face. Okay, that was pretty clean. That was actually a really good catch on that boo. So now we're gonna save warp again. This is called, uh, it's called the Gay Weston save warp. It's called that because for a long time save warping was banned. Um, it, it, like, it carried over from the SDA rules. So for many, many years, uh, you couldn't save warp in this game. It was just banned in all speedruns. And eventually, like, me and a couple of other people convince the community to allow save warps. So, it was just like a play on the whole legalized gay weed meme that we, uh, we legalized gay Weston. So that's why I have that rainbow Weston emote. It was basically just a middle finger to the people who wanted to keep save warp banned because there was no reason to, and it makes the game more interesting. Yeah, now we got Van Gore. Um, you have to get a triple on most of the types of ghosts in the game. So the, the lore here is that Van Gore painted all of the ghosts. So you come here and he has like all the ghosts and you have to fight a set of each of them. It's not particularly hard to do. Um, you, can, you can just triple all of them. Some of them are a little bit difficult, but none of them are too hard. It's, it's pretty easy to get all the triples. Let's see if I actually live up to that, though, now that I've said it. Really good so far. Those are very fast suck-ups, too. Yeah, dude, the Van Gore lore. Honestly, really good Van Gore there. Yeah, that was really clean.
Alright, and this is the last boo that we gotta get. So I leave the room before him so that I don't get another cutscene, like this cutscene. That was barely a two cycle, holy shit. That was awesome. Alright, now we just have the final boss left. So, uh, Bowser, you want a two-cycle. If you get a two-cycle, that means you did good. Um, it's not, like, insanely hard to do. It's... I would say it's inconsistent, though. Like, nobody gets it 100% of the time. If you play well, then you can always get it, though. It's not like it's RNG or anything. It's just pretty hard to do. I'll explain it more as the fight's happening. That was bad movement. You have to like sort of weave through those sparks to try and get to the door without getting hit. Um, and and I thought that I had enough room to get through the middle of them because you want to wind up on the left side of the door. It's it's a little bit faster. You want to enter every door at the the doorknob instead of the hinge. But yeah. So here we got King Boo. And he's gonna bring us inside the painting and we're gonna fight Bowser. Yeah, it is Blewitz. This was actually a pretty good run. A couple of things could have been better, but I'm happy with how it went. Yeah, just to give, uh, just to give people warning, time is sort of coming up. We got like a minute. You know, because. Milk kind of dropped the bar last run. I want to make sure that my run ends, you know? <laughs> Alright, so you gotta hit him with one of these bombs. And then... King Boo here is on, like, a timer. So, I need to, uh, get enough damage off of him before he goes back in. Oh, jeez. It's not looking too good. <laughs> But yeah, he has he has two different timers. There's a timer for like when he uh, starts trying to head back in, and then I can do R pumps. And then there's like a, a hard cut off timer where um, where he'll just go back in no matter what. So I can still two cycle this if I play well, but it's gonna be kind of sketchy. I'm gonna try for it. Oh man, I almost had that. That was really close. Um, if I'd gotten another pump off, then I actually had enough time. I just didn't do the R pump. That's, uh, that's unfortunate though. That loses a good chunk of time. It's like quite a big mistake, but that's okay. We'll just clean it up right here. And time. That was still a 5841, really? <laughs> Jeez. That was a decent time, dude. What the hell? I thought it was going to be a 59 with that 3 cycle. <laughs> That's awesome. Alright, well, thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the run.